Hi guys, welcome to this tactical video. Um, this video, if you haven't guessed already from what you can see, is about the Space Marine drop pod. Um, now, this could basically cover any kind of drop pod there is in 40k, so any faction's drop pod really. Um, as far as I know, they're all Imperial. Um, so yeah. Uh, because the way 7th edition works with allies and all the different detachments you can have, etc, etc, um, you can pretty much take any kind of um, Imperial army and because drop pods are now a fast attack option, you can effectively put anything you want in there. Um, so first off, what is a drop pod? It is of course a transport. Um, often it's a dedicated transport. Uh, it has a capacity of 10. It is open topped. Um, you cannot assault out of it, however, um, it just means you take the negatives and not the positives. Um, it comes stock with a storm bolter in the middle, and it, if you have one, it will come in turn one um, via deep strike, and it always arrives via deep strike. Apparently. And of course, once it lands, it cannot move. Now, this is pretty obvious for most people who've played, but you know, if you're new to it, um, the strengths of the drop pod are that um, it is a very, very safe way of deep striking um, because you can reduce the scatter um, it suffers. Um, so, for instance, if normally you would mishap by landing on uh, impassable terrain or onto uh, other units, then instead of a drop pod, you just um, remove, uh, remove, you uh, move the drop pod back along the way it's scattered. Um, until it's clear, basically. So it can never mishap in that sense. The only way it can actually mishap is if it scatters off the table. So as long as you um, make sure you're at least 12 inches away from all the table sides when you come to land it, then you're always going to be safe. And of course, coming in on turn one is very, very effective from Deep Strike. Um, you don't need to roll for it, it'll automatically come on. Um, last thing I should mention is the more drop pods you have, um, the more can come in on turn one. However, always um, half of your units must stay and arrive through normal reserves and if you have an odd number then you round up and that's the number of drop pods that can come in on turn one so there you go um, the other drawback well I say other drawback um, one of the drawbacks is that if you have a single drop pod or you have like say three drop pods um, and rounding up would be two that come in turn one, um, you cannot elect to have them not arrive on turn one. So they must arrive on turn one, um, which means your opponent can kind of anticipate what's what's going to happen, and probably, if he's smart, figure out where the hell it's going to land as well. So bear that in mind. Um, however, having said that, it's very, very safe, of course. Um, and there you go. So you get all this for 35 points, which is the same cost as a Rhino. Um, it's armor 12 all around. It doesn't really have facings because obviously, where the hell is its face? Um, it's pretty good. Now, one of the benefits is even though it can scatter away, is of course you are disembarking from it and you can move up to six inches unless you're going through terrain and blah blah blah. So, having that movement option um, can actually compensate for a lot of scatter issues. So, say if you ended up scattering quite far off, at least you can move six inches out. So it's not too bad at all, really. So let's open this up. See, so you see? So yeah, it comes down, it opens up, and blah blah blah, you have yourself a drop pod. Um, now, uh, generally speaking, the kind of things that can use this um, as a dedicated transport are things like tactical marines. Um, people like Stern Guard put them in. So basically anything that could use a rhino can effectively use a drop pod. Um, now, having said that, um, the common consensus is that drop pods are amazing, they're better than rhinos, um, one of the best transports in the game, and, you know, there's a lot of people out there who make all drop pod armies, because that means they can start everything in reserve for a, and put it wherever they want on turn one. That is true to an extent. There are a lot of limitations with such things, though, um, and I'm going to try and get across what I mean. But uh, what the drop pod gives you is Alpha Strike, which is very, very powerful in 40k, because you only have a finite number of turns at the end of the day. Um, so the quicker you can act, 
the better. And this is where, um, if you see my how to win at 40k videos, you'll know that um, speed wins you games, and this is another sense, of, uh, another form of speed. So having these abilities is very, very beneficial to your army. Um, where it suffers is in the versatility, because I've already, I've already said, like, if you've got one, it must derive turn one. Um, and, you know, other than that, it's stuck in reserves. Um, that could go well or bad, depending on how you build the rest of your army and your luck. Um, but, you know, you have less say in that sense. Um, on top of that, um, it's kind of putting all your eggs in one basket, because if the drop pod doesn't hit where it's supposed to, uh, your opponent successfully blocks uh, your target, what you're going for, um, all sorts of other things that come up, um, then you can it can kind of affect it, and because a drop pod is completely immobile once it arrives, it cannot move, and as a result, it's less versatile, it's much less versatile than a rhino. And I would say for the, the most part, and most army builds, the versatility of a rhino, as well as the speed it gives you, is more beneficial than a drop pod. Now on top of that, a rhino is giving you some armour protection, whereas this isn't, because as soon as the drop pod arrives, your unit must get out. So they're not getting any armour protection either, so basically it's just a delivery method, and that's it. And um, provided you put the right type of units in there for the right kind of role, well that's good enough. So. Uh, when it comes to getting a drop pod, I wouldn't just throw it on any unit willy-nilly. Um, I think it's very, very important that you put it on the right kind of unit to get the most from it. And this is pretty much common sense for most people, so, you know. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so, upgrades-wise, uh, there are two, basically. One is you can change the Storm Bolter for a Stormwind Death Launcher, is that right? Um, it's basically a missile launcher, it uh, fires a large blast, uh, 12 inches, strength 5, AP nothing, and there you go. Um, it's nice, it's very short range of course, and the biggest drawback is that it can scatter back, um, so you should be careful firing it um, if you've got a lot of troops that have just come out of the drop pod, because chances are it will touch them and effectively hurt them. Um, if you are going to fire it in this situation, make sure you fire the occupants who've got out the drop pod first. They can have fire at full capacity, and then you can fire that, and if it kills one or two of them, well, at least they've already fired, so, you know, um, make sure you do it in the right turn order. Um, otherwise, you know, the Storm Bolter is decent, 24-inch range, of course. Um, I usually keep it a standard weapon, just because it's 15 points for the Stormwind launcher, and it starts to jack up the price a lot for something that can't really move, it's easy for your opponent to get out of range, for, in, for the most part. Um, the other upgrade, which I think is probably one of the strongest parts of the drop pod, is the locator beacon. Um, for 10 points, it basically means anything that lands within 6 inches of the drop pod will not scatter. Um, the reason I think this is very effective is because um, I, for one, like to deep strike land speeders in. Um, and of course, you get them right into the enemy's front lines, they're cheap and throw away anyway, and if they land in this, they won't scatter. Now, putting this on a drop pod without a Stormwind launcher means that it's less of a target, so chances are the drop pod will be left alone um, and not attacked, because it's not really a massive threat at the time, you've got other things going forward, and then of course it survives and then um, land speeds come in and get the benefits. So I like it like that because you can use it to benefit your army very, very greatly um, when they come from deep strike. So it's a really, really effective way of getting deep strike and drop pods are great just because of that. Um, I already mentioned that you need to put the right kind of units in this. Um, generally speaking, something in a drop pod is something you are being very aggressive with. Um, so generally speaking, it needs to be something that can either punch very, very hard in shooting, because obviously it can't charge when it arrives, um, and thus do enough damage where it's safe the next turn, or it cripples something. Um, if it doesn't do that and it's not safe the next turn, then it needs to be something that was either really cheap, and doesn't matter if it gets destroyed, or you know you've done enough damage 
through shooting that you know it doesn't matter when it dies the the points cost um works out because it's done enough to aid the rest of your army um the other thing you can drop is something very very defensive that at least can hold out and that is kind of a distraction unit in the fact that um it's something that could potentially be dangerous in um the opponent's back line he has to deal with it um otherwise it's just going to go around mulching things and it's so defensive he has to dedicate a lot of firepower which protects the rest of your army so they're very very good for distraction um they're very good for surgical strikes because you know you can put melters in there get very very close to rear armor of like leo and rus squadrons for example um very very efficient for taking that kind of thing out so uh, generally speaking, the kind of stuff you want to put in here is either a throwaway unit or something very, very dedicated that you can afford to lose because odds are you're going to lose it. You're shoving it right in your opponent's face, what do you expect? Um, best way to protect these units is to have other units going forward. Um, things like bikes and assault marines and that kind of thing would always be beneficial for fast things. So, you know, he's he has to make tough choices on what he attacks. Um... Other than that, I mean, there is a lot of um, ways to get units in that most people wouldn't think of. For example, uh, Devastated Centurions with Grav Cannons. People are working out ways to take them in drop pods and that kind of thing, and fair enough. Um, not necessarily the best use in my opinion, but, you know, I can see the effect that... Um, it's essentially the same thing. It's still another distraction unit, really. It's, it's big and bold. Um, you know, it's something you've got to deal with. But generally speaking, if you're going to put anything in a drop pod and use it in this way, you have to be, um, you have to accept that that unit's probably going to die. So, don't expect it to survive. If it survives, great. Make it self a nuisance. Cause some havoc. You know, attack your opponent's back lines. Problem sorted. But, fully expect it to die when you put that drop pod on the table. Um... The other thing you can do is if you were playing it more defensively, which I don't think is the best use of a drop pod, but let's just say you don't have much choice, um, you can always drop the drop pods empty, so you can start the units on the board. Just drop a drop pod, and it's pretty good for blocking um, pathways. For example, if there's, a, if there's like a building here, a building here, you can drop this drop pod right in the middle, and of course um, it blocks a route. They can't walk over it, it's still a unit while it's alive. And at the very least, it'll slow them down. So it's kind of like a speed bump. Um, but it's, it's just good for blocking off routes and that kind of thing, because it'll stop uh, other vehicles from going through it, for instance, for a turn or two. So, uh, yeah, you can use them that way. Um, again, not the most efficient way. There's other ways of doing similar things like that, but at least it's a tactical option. Um, so, yeah, the, the right kind of number, I think, of drop pods depends on the point levels you're playing at. At low point games, I probably don't bother, um, because the way it works is, of course, you take a unit in a drop pod, it's effectively stranded, more or less, in that area for the game. Um, at smaller points levels, the units and model counts are smaller, so you're better off having something that can move around a bit more, um, such as a rhino. Um, However, as the points go up, I think they get very useful for distraction purposes, which is my favourite way of using them. Um, I like to put a command squad in it. Uh, command squad is probably my favourite thing to put in a drop pod. It's cheap. Um, you can equip them all with special weapons, so they have a lot of punch. And, you know, they're fairly decent in close combat. And, you know, they can hold out. The marines, five marines are quite hard to kill. Put them in the right place, they're very hard to kill. Um, so, yeah. That's always nice to put in there. But um, I'd say about uh, 1,500 points is when I'd start looking at two. Um, I don't feel like I need more than two drop pods. Um, I usually have two command squads. So I've got one with flamers, uh, one with melters, and that's it. And then I can pick whichever one I need to arrive turn one. Depending on what the most prominent threat is, if it's infantry, obviously I'll put flamers in. If it's tanks or something else, then take the melters. Um, it would be an option to take more, especially now that command squads are elites and not tied to HQ choices. Um, I would consider taking a third one um, with grav guns. 
to go on monster hunting or elite infantry hunting. But I'm also getting the impression that if Grav becomes um, prolific enough and um, ends up changing the meta enough, um, it may be that a lot of people stop taking as many elite troops and I think it may find fewer and fewer uses. But you know, if you've got the annoying Riptide and that kind of thing that always used to annoy you, Command Squad with Grav Guns can be very, very effective at killing it when it arrives in a drop pod. Just watch out for that Incept Fire, of course. So, um, yeah, that's that's effectively it. So I think two is enough. Now, people who play with all the drop pods, um, I know probably people watching this are like, many drop pods as possible, you know, go for it. Best thing you can do. Um, I disagree with that. I can see how it is effective, but there are ways to defend against drop pods. Um, just mentioning a couple briefly, because uh, this is actually turning into a long video. Um, castling up is always an option if you know there's a lot of drop pods coming in. Pick a corner of the table, basically hide there. Um, if they come at you, then they risk scattering off, or is it a bad idea? Um, if they do come at you, then you've got protection, and of course you can annihilate them when they arrive. Um, the more stuff they have in reserves, again, the less there is on the table to affect you, and that can be dangerous in Maelstrom missions. Um, so, you know, you have to exploit those kind of things. It's the same as with the flyers, again. Uh, finally, um, the drop pod itself, if you take it as a dedicated transport, and um, or you got it in some other way, and you have the obsec rule on the troops, then of course it's a transport, so it gets the objective secured rule itself, and even without that, it's still scoring just like everything else. So you can land this on a, um, what you call it, an objective, and of course it can hold it, which is really nice. Um, so it can kind of just sit there. Um, out of sight, and maybe your opponent won't realise it, and then there you go. Blah, blah, blah. Um, even if it does realise it, um, it can contest if it's obsec, which is quite easy to get with a drop pod. So, you know, it's nice. Um, so yeah, I think most people probably already know about drop pods, um, but for the sake of completeness, I kind of wanted to cover it. I've already done a video on rhinos. Um, whilst I do prefer the rhinos, drop pods certainly have a role. I just don't think you should use them for everything. In the same way, I don't think you should use a rhino for every unit, because um, whilst it, I think that would be a better than using drop pods for everything, you know, everything has its limitations. Um, the correct mix and the correct amount of synergy between all your army and every unit within your army is the best way to get the most strength out of it. So yeah, that's effectively it. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, remember to click like, um, feel free to comment and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching and see you again next time.